Good afternoon. I'm Howard Mount. I'm the Director of Education in the Institute of Medical Science, and I'm one of the graduate coordinators in the Institute of Medical Science. What I'm going to talk about are the programs in the IMS. The IMS is a graduate unit at the University of Toronto uh, that's populated by faculty and students, largely from the clinical departments in the Faculty of Medicine. We think you're making an excellent decision in considering University of Toronto from your graduate, for your graduate degree. In the most recent rankings of universities globally, University of Toronto has fared remarkably well and is poised as the top university for graduate studies in Canada and one of the top universities for graduate studies globally. The Institute of Medical Science is a graduate unit within the faculty of medicine, like biochemistry, physiology, molecular genetics, laboratory medicine, pathobiology, which are departments and graduate programs within the faculty of medicine. And we're also embedded within the School of Graduate Studies. We're the largest graduate unit in the Faculty of Medicine. Uh, we're one of the largest graduate units within the University of Toronto with 560 faculty members, uh, 460 students. We run two doctoral stream programs, a Master's of Science and a, and a PhD program. And we also run three professional master's programs. We're characterized um, by tremendous disciplinary depth in our programs. And that's a simple function of the fact that our faculty um, spread, uh, are, are, is very large for one, and uh, is carefully selected for their abilities to lead uh, students in research projects across the spectrum of uh, research areas in medicine and health science. So we really truly are a bench to bedside to community institute. Our research tends to have a translational focus, but it includes basic science in a laboratory as well as uh, population health issues that many of our students address. And go so, we go so far as to study health um, healthcare education. We're an institute without walls. Our students are distributed across the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, uh, in uh, numerous uh, hospitals and institutes. So here you see we're actually up here. Oops, I'm not sure I can get the cursor to work. But, but we're in the bullseye here, right at whoops, Queen's Park, uh, in the center of the Innovation District of Toronto in downtown Toronto. For those of you who are observing from outside Toronto, um, uh, this is in fact the hub in every sense. There's a, both an entertainment district locally, there are wonderful shops, uh, there's a wonderful area to, to live downtown Toronto. It's a very dynamic place, an enjoyable place for our students and faculty to live. It's also where most of the teaching hospitals where our faculty and students are based where those hospitals are located, uh, and they're clustered around the University of Toronto. So what do we offer? Our main program is, in fact, a research, what we call a doctoral stream program, and we offer both master's and PhD degrees in the doctoral stream. These are thesis-based degrees, um, and they have a strong emphasis on scholarly research. They're what we would consider uh, thesis-heavy, course-light programs. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the research, the thesis research that you do in IMS may be in a wide range of disciplines. We have students working in, um, in economic analysis. We have students who are doing straight molecular biology programs, we have electrophysiologists, we have students interested in population health, 
and in clinical trials, as well as bioethics. So it's a wide range of multidisciplinary research, and it's, this is captured to some extent in this, uh, this diagram, which shows some of the themes of our research. And you can see it ranges from translational research, truly neuroscience, brain health, cardiovascular, respiratory medicine, musculoskeletal, population health education, cancer, uh, regenerative medicine is a major theme within IMS. And these themes are, are captured by our faculty in our laboratories. Now, at the University of Toronto, we have something else, which are called collaborative programs. And they're essentially overlays on your, your degree program. They, uh, they afford you the chance to have a structured uh, specialization added to your program and noted on your transcript. IMS participates in 18 collaborative programs across the university. Many of our students, for example, who are studying neuroscience belong to the program in neuroscience. And this allows them to, in this very large uh, university, to have a broader community than they would encounter in their hospital or in the IMS, and to relate with neuroscience and students and faculty across the university. So um, let me go on now to the professional stream programs that we uh, run. We have three. They're Masters of Science and Masters of Health Science. Uh, we have uh, the Master of Science in Biomedical Communication. It's unique in Canada. And it's one of only five accredited programs of its kind in the world. Uh, it's a two-year professional graduate program. And it prepares students for careers in visual communication of science, medicine, and health. Our BMC students are artists. They're animators. They are interested in simulations to communicate complex science and health topics to a, a diverse audience. It's one of our, our, our showcase uh, programs, indeed. We also run a Master's of Health Science in Medical Radiation Sciences. This, again, is a, is a unique program in Toronto. It's open to radiation therapists, and it's designed to develop the skills required for advanced practice in radiation medicine. Now, in order to apply for this program, you must be a certified radiation therapist, or you must be eligible for certification, and you must have uh, at least 5,000 hours of clinical experience, as well as an undergraduate degree. Our newest uh, master's program, which is in fact just launching September 2015, is a Master of Health Science in Translational Research. Now, this is a capstone-based, uh, a capstone project-based program, that, and the idea of this program is to empower you to de deploy your scientific knowledge to solve problems um, by iterative design, and those problems are across the spectrum of human health. I'll come back to this program later. So who are our faculty? Um, I, I say this um, with, with, with no bashfulness. Our IMS graduate supervisors truly are world-class researchers. Many are international superstars in their fields, in surgery, in transplant surgery, in biomaterials, in neurosurgery, in psychiatry, in infectious diseases, um, in uh, cancer biology, and, and as I mentioned earlier, we have a strong specialization and interest in regenerative medicine and stem cell biology. Our faculty members, as I said, are spread across the university. Many of our students and faculty are at CAMH, which is our, the main uh, location of, of psychiatry. It's where psychiatry is based. Uh, many are at the Hospital for Sick Children, uh, at Mount Sinai Hospital, at Sunnybrook, at the Toronto General Hospital, Toronto Western Hospital, Rehab, Princess Margaret, etc. We're re truly scattered across the GTA. All of these nodes have significant critical mass, and so they function as, as research institutes. How about our students? Who are they? 14% of our students are licensed clinical care providers, mainly medical doctors. 16% are, uh, an additional 16% are international medical graduates 
who are supplementing their, their, their training, their previous training, with some research training in IMS. And about 70% of our students are BSc or MSc graduates without any health uh, professional training. What characterizes all of our students is that they're highly motivated, academically accomplished individuals with a passion for exploration. We screen for that. What do we do? Well, our, our, we see our mission as being preparing yourself for the future. What we offer is training for research, but also training through research. And what we want to build in our students and, and what we practice is skills of communication, skills of analysis, skills of leadership, of networking, of team building, and above all, the critical thinking skills. And these are indispensable for your career as a professional, regardless of whether you stay in biomedical research or move on to another field of endeavor. Intrigued? Would you like to apply? Well, please do contact us. Your first point of contact would be Ms. Hazel Pollard, who's our admissions officer. You see her pictured on the left. I'm a graduate coordinator. Dr. Cindy Morshead is another, and Dr. Vasu Venkatesvoren is yet another graduate coordinator. Uh, Dr. Uh, Joseph Fehrenbach is leading our new program in translational uh, research, and uh, uh, more on that later. We can be accessed on the web. Please send us an email, or you can telephone to get more information. Uh, we're, we're always interested to hear from students and potential students. Entry into our programs um, is based on academic achievement, letters of reference, a letter of intent, and an interview with a graduate coordinator. Now, that's a unique feature of our program that we interview all applicants so that we can ensure that there's a good match between who you are, what you're looking for, and what we may be able to help you find. For, in terms of the academic requirements, uh, we require a four-year BA or BSc or an MD from a recognized university program with a minimum of A minus. What we mean by this is 80% in our system or first class standing in three out of those four years, including the final year. We want letters of reference and those letters of reference must be from faculty members at a recognized university. Uh, who are familiar with your achievements, your personal attributes, and your research experience and can speak to those in the letter. We want a letter of intent from you, and this is really your opportunity to highlight what it is you're after, your potential research interests, and any other information that's pertinent to your application. And then, as I mentioned, finally, you'll have an opportunity to meet with myself or with one of the other uh, three graduate coordinators to expand upon and clarify uh, what you've written in the letter and to provide any updates related to your application. And again, uh, Ms. Hazel Pollard will schedule your interview with one of us. So we get this question a lot. Do I need to have a supervisor to apply uh, to the doctoral stream programs. No, um, you do not need to have a supervisor identified at the time of your application if you're a domestic applicant. Um, it's a very good idea to have identified someone so that you'll have a sense of why you're applying. It'll certainly make your letter of intent easier to write. So please start exploring opportunities with potential supervisors. It's never too early to start that process. Now, if you're applying to the PhD program directly or out of a master's, um, or if you're an international applicant, you really do need to identify a supervisor up front. For obvious logistical reasons, it takes some time to get a visa to come to Canada to do these studies, and we want to be sure that that's all in place so that you will be able to make the uh, process. Who's going to review your application? Well, after that interview with the graduate coordinator, your complete application is going to be processed by our admissions commi committee, and that's about 15 members of faculty and a few students, and they review uh, every application separately and uh, make a decision, and then we get together and we uh, develop a consensus and, uh, and or otherwise vote. 
So, um, so certainly the process in IMS is very formalized, and, it's a, and it does take some time and some consideration of, of, and many inputs. Now, you may already know this, but so that, you, so that this is said, how is funding arranged? Well, all IMS students who are in a thesis-based program, so that's the MSc or the PhD, they're funded according to a harmonized stipend agreement that was set out by the Faculty of Medicine. And what this means is that uh, your program, this, the, your supervisor in particular, will cover your living costs and your tuition as part of this stipend. And uh, will cover that for the duration, the normal duration of your degree program. Now we have uh, several deadlines through the year. The upcoming deadline, and this is really important to know, for September admission is June 1st. So you'll need to initiate your application if you're interested uh, before June 1st, and we will expect to have all of your materials in by the middle of June in order to make this cycle. If you're an online, uh, if you're an international student, you have a slightly earlier deadline. Uh, I would still encourage you to apply if you're interested. It's, the deadline was March 1st, and again, the concern is, is the time required to get a visa, but please don't hesitate to contact Ms. Pollard if you would be interested in applying now from abroad. Now, I wanted to mention briefly again this translational master's, the new program that we've started. It's uh, designed to provide an individualized curriculum experience. It's flexible. We have modular courses in this program. And it's all designed around solving real problems that form the core of your capstone project. Uh, this program uh, does not involve a graduate stipend. You will, be, you will not be paid in a professional master's program, only the research stream. The deadline for this app applications to this program is also June 1st. The procedure for applying is just as described for the doctoral stream programs. I would encourage those of you who are, can get to Toronto um, to come and visit us. And the, a perfect time to come to visit us in IMS is on May 12th, 2015, when we hold our annual scientific day. If you're interested, please go to our website, let us know you're coming, and we'll, we'll make a point of, made, of taking the time to give you an orientation to IMS and our programs. At Scientific Day, you'll also have a chance to see the sort of research that our students and faculty are doing. You can meet with students, you can talk about which labs you might want to go. It's a great time to, to get oriented to IMS. Again, that's May 12th. Um, while you're there, uh, you, should, you should certainly ask about our student association. IMS has one of the most dynamic and engaged student associations in the Faculty of Medicine. Here you see uh, a fraction of our executive for the IMSA. Um, they organize a lot of social events, a lot of academic events. They have a lot of fun. And our students also publish a top-notch um, magazine, which is available on the web. If you search for IMSA or IMS magazine on the web, you'll get a chance to see some of the activities that our student association is involved in and also see the high quality of publication that our students put out regularly. So again, please join us. Uh, please let us know if you would be interested. If you have questions, the questions can be filtered through Ms. Hazel Pollard to the graduate coordinators, and we'd be more than happy to see you here at IMS. Thank you. I, I would like to ask uh, whether, are there any like specific programs or like, I mean, in your bachelor's that you have to do, because you said that you can do either a BA or a BSc, or you have to have an MD, but like, are there any specific courses or specific programs which are like, which kind of get you easier into IMS for master's or PhD program? Thank you. Yeah, so the question, and in case people haven't heard, was what type of background one needs to get into the IMS. And that's an excellent question. We get this quite frequently. Um, no, there are no prerequisites for getting into the IMS. Um, it's not like, say, a biochemistry department where you would need to have done fourth-year biochemistry courses in order to qualify for entry 
or physiology the same. Um, so because we're so broad, we really look at your background and we look at where you're going and we do want to see that you have an appropriate background for the type of research that you might want to do. But for example, we have students who've decided to study um, uh, the economics be behind some healthcare delivery system. And in one case, we have a chartered accountant with no science background who's gone to do, on to do his PhD in that area. So we certainly have diverse backgrounds, and that's one of the reasons that we need to have this one-on-one uh, -on -one meeting with you, to look at your background, to see where you're wanting to go, and to see what the fit uh, appears to be. Thanks. Could you comment on the uh, amount of research exposure a student should be having before applying to the program? Yeah, that's a really important point. Um, we expect that you have some exposure to research um, before applying. The typical person applying out of an undergraduate degree, that 70% of the type student, will have done a fourth year project or a senior thesis. And uh, in fact, the letter of reference from that director of that senior thesis will be really uh, provide a, a lot of insight into how you are likely to do in graduate school. So we do encourage you to get your feet wet before you apply. And in some cases where um, you've had no experience, you may in fact want to volunteer or work in a laboratory uh, for a summer to gain some exposure before you uh, go through the process of applying, just to make sure it's right for you. But we certainly, um, most of our students applying uh, do have some research experience. Um, many have published papers, and certainly um, the public, publishing papers in the peer-reviewed literature um, is a sign that you actually have a sense of what's going on in research and that you know what you're getting into when you do a, a research-based degree. Uh, just to add one more question, um, in terms of choosing my referees, what should I be focusing on? Like the type of referees I should be focusing on? Should they all be faculties or should I have other people whom I can choose as referees? Well, we're not looking for personal references in the application. Um, what we're looking for are people who've seen you, how you think, how you write, um, who uh, may, may have taught you in a course and have seen how you perform under pressure of an exam. So that's why we, we require faculty references. We're not looking for references from a postdoc or from a student or a friend or a family member. Uh, we really want somebody who's taught you in some capacity, supervised you in a research environment. Yeah. Did you say that the Biomedical Communications Master's was a professional degree or a research-based degree? Thanks. It's a professional degree. And it's, it's, it's actually, those graduates are accredited by a body in the States that, that the University of Toronto is also signatory to. Uh, those, just, I might add, those of you interested in the BMC program should really Google Biomedical Communications Toronto. You'll see that they have a, a well-developed website. They are, in fact, artists. And it's beautifully uh, uh, set out there what their requirements, what they do, what the typical type of work they do is. So please do visit the BMC site. Okay, well, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>